Since you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you want to learn how to animate. Well, do I have good news for you, because that is exactly what this video is about. I'm going to walk you through how to set up, animate, and complete your very first animation project using the program Krita. It's 100% free, so no worries there. I'll also be mentioning some other programs I use to polish off my animations and the physical tools I have and or recommend to get started animating. All of the videos, resources, and tools that I talk about will be linked in the description below. Alright, take a seat, relax, and let's jump right in. The first thing you'll want to do is decide what type of animation you want to create. A very popular style of animation on YouTube is story time animating, which is when animators tell funny or interesting stories from their own life. I've done quite a few of these myself, and they're super fun, but there are plenty of other animation categories you might be interested in. You could create your own cartoon show with fictional characters who get up to all sorts of adventures, or maybe you want to animate over audio memes or music. The possibilities are endless. If you're animating a story time or a cartoon you're creating yourself and you need to write out a script, here are my four quick tips on how to write a story that is fun and entertaining. First, come up with the main concept. Is there a funny story you want to tell? A joke that you want to animate? Once you have the main idea figured out, we can break it down into three key pieces. The first piece is the hook. Every good video starts with an intro that makes the viewer want to pay attention and, you know, watch through the whole thing. We all know how short people's attention spans are these days. In fact, I should have subway surfers or a satisfying video compilation playing as I talk. But anyway, make sure your hook sets up the rest of the video, introduces your viewer to what is going on, and makes them want to keep watching. The middle piece is where you add all the boring stuff before the final punchline. You know, it'll be explaining all the details the viewer needs to know in a story, and building up to the climax of whatever happened. If you're telling a joke, it's adding context to the joke to make it even more funny once you tell it. But make sure it doesn't get too boring. Keep it as concise as possible, don't go off on too many rabbit trails, and make sure to keep things funny and interesting the whole time. And the last piece is, of course, the punchline itself. This is the climax of the story, or the final line that completes the joke and makes everyone laugh. As long as you follow these basic steps when writing your script, it's going to keep your video fun and interesting for both you as you animate it, and your viewers once it's time to show to the world. If you want, share your script with a friend or fellow animator and get feedback on any things you might need to rewrite. This can be a great way to become a better storyteller and make sure every animation that you make is the best that it can be. Once you have your video idea and your script written out, the next step is going to be recording all the voice lines for your video. To do this, I recommend two things. Number one, a good microphone, and two, a good audio software. Let's start with microphones. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not an expert when it comes to sniffing out the best microphone or animation equipment in general. However, I can recommend the tools I've used or am currently using. The mic that I have right now is the basic Toner USB microphone. It's really easy to use, has a nice pop filter, and sounds... well, it sounds okay. You can probably tell from my videos that it isn't the highest quality mic in the world, but hey, it's super affordable and it gets the job done. And I've been using it for like three years now, so it's stayed in pretty good condition. If you're interested in checking it out, I have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Which means if you purchase the microphone from that link, it will help support me and my channel with no extra cost to you. <laughs> That's a win-win. If you're looking for a higher quality mic, there are definitely tons out there that are also reasonably affordable. I'm actually looking for a better mic right now myself, so maybe my videos won't sound quite as rough. Once you've got a mic you're happy with and ready to go, you're going to need a software that can record your audio and give you all the tools that you need to make it sound sharp and professional. I recommend the program Audacity. It's 100% free and really easy to download onto your PC. Head over to audacityteam.org and download the latest version for your operating system. Since everyone seems to have a computer that's slightly different, I can't really help you there, but hopefully you can figure this out without too much trouble. When in doubt, there's probably a YouTube video out there somewhere to help you figure out how to install it. Once you've got Audacity installed, recording your lines isn't too difficult. Just hit the big red record button for it to start, the stop button for it to stop, and the playback button to make sure everything sounds right. You can cut pieces of the audio out that you don't like by simply selecting a portion of the audio and deleting it. And there are also a lot of fun effects and features that you can add to your audio to make it sound exactly how you want it. Make sure to save your project as well as your audio file. I always save my audio as an mp3. Okay, you have your video idea, a script, and now all the audio you need to animate with. But what exactly do you need to start animating? Once again, I've got two suggestions. Number one, a drawing tablet. And number two, the right software. As someone who animated with a mouse for the first several months of learning, I can say from experience that it's pretty difficult and doesn't yield the best quality results. I believe that one of the best investments you can make for yourself as an animator is purchasing a high quality drawing tablet. 
But which one do you get? From Wacom to Huion to Gammon, there are so many brands, tablet types, and budget options ranging from $30 to $3,000. <laughs> you serious? Trust me, I totally understand this analysis paralysis. And once again, I'm not an expert on what the perfect equipment is because I've only ever owned three drawing tablets. The first was a $40 Huion drawing tablet. It wasn't bad, but it only lasted for around a year and a half before it broke. If you're looking for a tablet, but you're not super invested in this whole animation thing for years to come, a cheaper tablet isn't bad. However, my greatest recommendation for any beginner animator would be the basic Wacom Pad drawing tablet. I used this thing for probably three years and it's still going strong. You can animate a lot with this and it's not much more expensive than the cheaper tablet I talked about earlier. Once again, I'll have an Amazon affiliate link to this product below if you would like to check it out. And if you purchase it through that link, you'd be greatly supporting me and this channel Channel for no extra cost to you. So thank you. The drawing tablet I just recently upgraded to is the Gammon Screen Drawing Tablet. With a screen to draw directly on, it feels much more natural as if you're drawing on paper, so your art can be a lot more detailed and smooth. I've been using this tablet for several months now and I absolutely love it. An Amazon affiliate link for this will also be in the description. However, this is a lot more pricey than the other one, so if you're just getting into animating, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're invested in taking your animation game to the next level and you have the money, this one's pretty great. Okay, once you've got the equipment you need, it's finally time to get to animating. So let's download Krita. You can do that directly from their website, krita.org, and download the correct file for your device. Once you have that installed, let's jump inside. Alright, so now that we're in Krita, we can finally start animating. This should be what you see as soon as you open the program. So to start a new file, just click New Image, and this should pop up. Now, as you can see, we have all these preferences here. I personally just go with the default preferences, but if you want to change anything, this is where you'll do it. If, for example, you wanted to create a short form animation, then you would just switch over here to this portrait option. But if you're creating a long form video, you're probably going to want to do landscape. I've never really messed around with the resolution options, but if it's too low quality for you or it's too high quality for you, this is where you can change that. All right, this looks good. So let's create our brand new animation. Okay, so this is what the default setup of Krita looks like, and as you can see, it doesn't really look like an animation program right now. However, something really nice about Krita is that they have a default animation template. So just move your mouse up to the top right of the file, hit this little icon that says Choose Workspace. You can see that it's currently set on the default workspace. However, if you scroll up, there's an animation workspace that you can hit, and boom, we have a pre-made animation template. We have all of our tool options right here, and we've got some pre-made color palettes, which you can change here. You have a very important part of animating, which is the layers. And down here you have the playback options and the timeline. And over here you have your onion skin controls. However, before we do anything else, make sure to save your file so that we don't lose any of our animation, because trust me, I have done that before and it is awful. So you can just go up to the top left, hit File, and click Save. Alright, now with the file saved, we can finally, finally, get to the animating. But how do we upload an audio file so that we can animate over it? Well, Krita actually makes that quite simple. All you have to do is go down to this bottom right corner of the timeline, click on the audio menu, and right here it gives you the choice to import an audio file. So you can import any audio file on your computer, and for this example, I'm going to be uploading this audio file. So select the file you want, hit open, and it should be uploaded. Now, if you hit play on the timeline, you can hear the audio being played. All right, so now that we have the audio, we can start animating over it. I personally don't exactly like how the default animation template is set up, so I'm gonna move some things around. And a very easy way to do that is just grabbing anything you wanna move and dragging it around. So there we go, I've moved the layers over to the other side, and I just prefer that. I'm also gonna move the tool options over here, and I don't really care to have this overview, so I'm just gonna delete that. I'm going to move the palette over here as well, and to make the timeline a little easier to see, I'm just going to boost this up. Also, since I'm going to want to use different brushes as I animate, I'm going to go up to Settings, hit Dockers, and go all the way down to Brush Presets. And if I hit that, and now as you can see, all the brush presets are here, so I can pick from quite a variety of options that Krita has for all these brushes. The one I usually stick with is this solid paintbrush, but there's quite a few options, so you can mess around with it and see which one you like. I also really like to have a color wheel at hand while I'm animating, so I'm going to go up to Settings again, hit Dockers, and click Advanced Color Selector. And now right here we have a color wheel. Perfect! 
Let's move onion skins up to here, and we can talk about that later. Alright, but now let's really get to animating. I'm going to use this default layer they have already available, and I'm going to title it Ball. Because if you couldn't guess from the audio I picked, I'm going to be animating a simple ball bouncing across the screen just to show you the basics of animating in Krita. Alright, so now if we go down to the frames, and we hit Create Blank Frame, or hit the spacebar, this will create our first blank frame that we can start animating on. So I'm going to start animating with the ball up here in the top left corner, and sketch it out. It doesn't have to be anything great. Then I'm going to drag across the timeline until I hear the audio. And when I hear that, I know that that is when the ball has to hit the ground first. So I'm going to go to here, I'm going to hit space, I'm going to create a new blank frame, and I'm going to draw the ball down here. And incorporating the good old principle of squash and stretch, I'm going to have the ball a little bit more in oval shape. It might look a little weird now, but you'll see how that all comes together once the animation is complete. Okay, moving on, I'm going to drag the timeline to the next sound effect, right here, hit space again to create a new blank frame, and I'm going to animate the ball hitting the ground once again, but a little further on. And one more time, I'm going to drag across the frames until I hear the last sound effect of the ball bouncing, right here, hit space to create a new frame, and draw the ball hitting the ground for the last time. Now, if you're confused as to why I'm drawing the ball hitting the ground before I'm drawing the other frames, this is an animation technique called pose-by-pose pose animation. And that's when you animate the main subject of your animation in its most obvious poses, before going back through and adding all the in-between drawings so that the movement is smooth. Okay, so now if we go back to the beginning of the animation and we hit playback... Yeah, it just looks like an oval being dragged across the ground. However, we are going to fix that because we're going to go back through and we're going to start adding all the in-between frames so that the animation looks nice and smooth. And this is where onion skinning comes in. So to activate onion skinning in Krita, all you have to do is go over to this layer and hit this light bulb icon. And there we go. As you can see, we have this red and green image of the before and after frames. So this gives us a picture of the animation as a whole and helps us to draw the in-between frames way more accurately. Alright, now that I have the onion skinning on, you can see that I actually made a mistake and I put these two frames way too close together. So to fix that, I'm going to go up to the tool options and I'm going to click this transform tool and that easily allows me to just drag this frame wherever I want it. So I'm just going to move this a little over to the right so that when the ball bounces it's going to be a lot more accurate looking. Okay, to draw the first in-between, I'm going to go right in between these two frames, I'm going to click space to create a new empty frame, and I'm going to draw the ball way up in the sky over here. And I'm going to do the same over here. Alright, now if we play back the animation... Ahaha! It's all starting to come together! However, it definitely has to be smoother, and I'm going to do that by adding in-between frames. And to save time doing that, instead of doing pose-by-pose pose animation, I'm going to switch to frame-by-frame frame animation, which is exactly how it sounds. I'm just going to go frame-by-frame frame and add all the in-betweens and make this animation nice and smooth. So I'm going to add the ball here, go to the next frame, and add the ball here, go to the next frame, add the ball here, and here, and here. And I'm going to do this in between all my pose-by-pose pose animation. Alright, now that all the frames are filled in, this is what the animation looks like. That's looking way better. However, I want to make this a looping animation, so I'm just going to add a really quick beginning and end so that the ball goes in and out of the frame completely. So add a little one right here, add another frame right here, and I'm also going to add the ball bouncing out of the frame really quick. So now if I play the animation back... The animation can loop, but I want to touch up this animation just a little bit and add color to the ball. So to do this really easily, all you have to do is click the fill tool, and I'm just going to select red, and while your color is still on the same layer as your drawing, all you have to do is just click, and it should pretty easily fill in every frame. Obviously I made this drawing really rough, so some of the lines of this frame is going to have to be thickened up before it'll actually fully fill. 
And there we go. Now it's all colored in. But let's add one more thing. I'm going to get a little fancy with it, and I'm going to add a slight highlight to the ball. And to show you how layers work, I'm going to add a new layer right here by clicking the plus icon, title it Highlight, and now I can animate over my old layer without risking messing it up. For the highlight, I'm going to use the airbrush tool and move this to white. And because I'm going to be animating the highlight frame by frame, I'm just going to make all of these empty frames. Okay, the airbrush size is really big, so I'm just going to move this down to, let's try 50. Alright, looks good, and I'm just going to quickly add a highlight to every frame. And as you can see, animation can get a little bit tedious at times, but hey, you'll learn to love it. Alright, now as you can see, the animation is complete. It's certainly not the best animation, but I think it gets the point across. However, there's still a lot of extra frames on this timeline that I don't even need to use. So to change how many frames there are available, all you have to do is click this icon, and here you can change how many frames are available as well as the frame rate, which is how many animation frames are played per second. 24 is the industry standard, and I personally like to keep it that way, but if you want more frames in a second or less frames in a second, that's where you can change that. Okay, so my animation ends on the 40th frame, so I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to punch in 40. Now all those extra frames aren't available, and now the animation just sticks within these 40 frames. So for the grand animation reveal, let's lock these layers up and hide the onion skin. Now we just hit play and enjoy our handiwork. And there we go, as you can see the animation is done and the loop works and it's great. Now if you want to render out your animation as a video, all you have to do is go to render animation, you just go down here, click export as video, you can choose the ratio, again the frames per second, and what video format you want it to be rendered as. MPEG4 should be just fine. Here you can choose the location of where the file is going to be in your computer. I'm just going to save this in my animation projects folder and hit save. And if you're animating over an audio and you want it to be included in the video, just make sure that this include audio box is checked. Alright, now we just hit OK and we wait for it to render. And that's that! Congratulations on completing your first ever animation in Krita! However, one final tip, though rendering an animation as a video directly from Krita can be useful, I personally like to render my animations as photos and then compile them in a separate video editing software so I can make cuts, add subtitles, add extra sound effects or music, and other things like that. So if you want to render your animation as a series of pictures, all you have to do is go down to render animation, go up here to export as image sequence, and you can select your image location. Once again, I'm just going to save mine to my animation projects folder. Okay, so choose that, and you should be good to go. Now you can take those pictures, put them into a video editing software if you want, and add a bunch of extra things like music and all that good stuff. There are a lot of great video editing softwares out there, but the one I personally use is the free and open source program Blender. It has a pre-made video editing template, and once you learn the basics, it's pretty easy to use, and you can make videos that look quite professional. I won't get into all the details of how to use that, but if you're interested, my brother is actually a Blender YouTuber who makes all sorts of tutorials. I'll link a video editing series he did in the description below if you want to learn more. And make sure to subscribe to him, he's awesome. Okay, that's it. I hope after this video you feel a little more confident to go out and try animating for yourself. It definitely takes hard work and consistency to get better, but I believe in you. And most of all, have fun with it. It's the journey that matters, not the destination. Or however that quote goes. This is my first time making any sort of tutorial video, so I apologize if I forgot anything or if some of my explanations were a little confusing. Feel free to comment any further questions you have down below, and I'll do my absolute best to help you out. Have a great day, like the video if you found it helpful, and subscribe if you want to see some fun animations made by me in the future. And never forget to stay creative.